by our religious chair, Nancy Miller. And then we will play a song and then we'll get into guests and so forth. Okay? Welcome to March 23rd council meeting. This is from a, a prayer which was uh, written almost 40 years ago today from the World Council of Churches. Our thoughts go so much to the people in Ukraine, and I'm sure they're on all of our minds. You have called us to be one, to live in unity and harmony, and yet we are divided, race from race, faith from faith, rich from poor, old from young, neighbor from neighbor. O oh Lord, may you have all enmity brought to an end, Break down the walls that separate us. Tear down the fences of indifference and hatred. Forgive us the sins that divide us. Free us from pride and fears. Give us courage to open ourselves to others by the power of your spirit. Make us one. And now we can pray. Gracious Father, we pray for peace in our world, for all national leaders that they may have the wisdom to know and courage to do what is right. For all men and women, that their hearts may be turned to yourself in the search for righteousness and truth. For those who are working to improve international relationships, that they may find the true way of reconciliation. For those who suffer as a result of war, the injured, the disabled, the mentally distressed, the homeless, the hungry, those who mourn for the dead, 
and especially for those who are without hope or friend to sustain them in their grief. In thy name we ask. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, welcome once again. Um, we've got some guests here today, and we're going to, uh, before we get into the main program, we're going to start with our guest, and um, we have some scholarship winners to start this off, and it's an exciting time for us, and I hope it's an exciting time for them, and I'll turn it over to uh, the scholarship folks. Falls and I'm a member of the scholarship committee. More than a year ago, a group of dedicated residents started meeting to develop the, uh, the Cedarfield Scholarship Program, not only to be part of the 25th anniversary celebration of our team members, but also to be a permanent part of Cedarfield. Funds for the scholarship have been donated by residents, the Cedarfield leadership team, and several families who wanted to honor team members for their service. The scholarship provides educational assistance to those team members who want to grow in their careers at Cedarfield. It's a benefit we can share and offer. I want to thank the residents who have served on the scholarship action team for their hard work and dedication, and Stephanie Burkham's Cedarfield's Director of Human Relations, Resources, excuse me, re, re, Resources, and Allison Zach, Philanthropy Director for Staffing Their Work. So far, the group has awarded 13 scholarships, and we are excited to announce six more today. It is always exciting to read the applications written by our team members and get a glimpse into their hopes and dreams for their careers and how education can play a part in helping them achieve these dreams. Here's how it works. Each inter interested team member fills out an application. Their names are removed so we do not know who is applying and their supervisors must sign off on their application indicating that they support their team members' career goals and they need to write an essay about why they want to be a, a Cedarfield Scholar. There are seven residents on the committee. We score each application based on their stated goals and how their education will help them serve the Cedarfield community and its residents. This afternoon we are delighted to present to you our six latest Cedarfield Scholars two of whom will be continuing their studies, and four that are starting their programs. Members of our scholarship action team will share a bit about each one from their essays. Dick. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. I'm Dick Sessoms, and I'm delighted to be here to present Will Stern, Ancillary, Anc Ancillary Services Manager in Lifestyles and Wellness. Will will be taking a class on Introduction to Human Resources at Reynolds Community College. This is the second award he has received to take classes in business administration. To quote from Will's application, my interest in pursuing this class is driven by my desire to improve my management skills. I feel it will improve my area of operation within lifestyle and wellness department, making staff relations a priority and making functional improvements to concierge and transportation services at Cedarfield so we can give residents the best possible service. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You get back to work now. It's my privilege to introduce, and she's not here, Lori Andrews, the Cedarfield Move-In Coordinator. This is the second time you have heard about her, and I'm delighted to say that she is a recipient not only of the scholarship funds available to her here, but she has received two additional awards so maybe she's accepting one of those other awards and is not here with us today. It is her interest in pursuing the complete satisfaction of all people who are moving into the health services, independent living, or apartment living. And Lord knows I need her services right now. She is a basic interior design person and wants to get her certificate to improve her quality of service to our residents. I would like to introduce to her, though she is not here, Lori Andrews and wish her well in her endeavors. It's my pleasure to announce that Susan Dunaway, the MDS Coordinator in Health Services, will be taking an in-person course for certification for resident assessment from the Association of Post-Acute Care Nursing. She, in her application, said that completing this, this certification will ensure that I have the knowledge of performing all my roles in the MDS process. As Cedarfield moves towards offering Medicare skilled services, this will prepare me for knowing all the Medicare guidelines for skilled services and knowing how residents can get the most from their Medicare benefits. Let's enjoy having Susan become certified. I'm Ann Williams, and it's my pleasure to announce Mariah Robinson, Administrative Assistant in the Lifestyles and Wellness Department. Mariah will be taking two classes at John Tyler Community College toward a degree in computer science. I real she writes in her application, I realized how much I enjoyed working on computers. I would like to get an associate degree in computer science and be the first one in my family to graduate from college. I want to help residents and staff who have questions and be able to help with Touchtown and my Cedarfield app. Congratulations, Mariah.
Good afternoon, I'm Sylvia Fine, and I want to introduce a very special person, Annie Van Hook. And Annie is cha in the chaplain and pastoral services here at Cedarfield. Annie will be taking a course to become a certified grief counselor. It is not just astounding that Cedarfield will at last have someone in that role officially. I'm very excited about that, Annie. This is what Annie writes on her application. I plan to support Cedarfield residents and staff during challenging life situations. I hope to help residents understand loss, embrace grief, and enable comfort and closure. I'm passionate about making an impact on others and assisting them navigate through life's journey. Congratulations, Annie. We're very excited about that. Annie, you may need this. Yes, I do. Okay, <laughs> great. Our next scholar is Jack. Jack Johnson. Many of you know Jack as he's around here helping us all the time. Jack serves as Cedarfield's Assistant Director of Maintenance. He will be taking a course to be a Certified Facilities Manager. And Jack writes on his application, the course materials and certification will strengthen my knowledge and help me lead the team to provide the best service to our residents. IFMA is a very structured certification that covers all areas of facilities management. I am looking forward to the courses and ultimately becoming certified. Jack, we're looking forward to it too. <laughs> And now, here comes Frank Moncastle, who serves as our Chair of Scholarship Action Team's efforts in raising resources, i.e. money, for this program. <laughs> Take it away. Thanks, Sylvia. <clears throat> and hi, everybody. Um, it's an honor to be uh, part of the Cedarsville Scholarship Program and, and to watch it grow over the years. Um, and I want to thank the many residents here have, who already have contributed to the scholarship program, as well as the team members uh, with Paul and his group. And uh, we have many, many generous people who have made it grow. Uh, as stated here, we have 19 uh, scholarships uh, will be, at the end of today, will have be Cedarfield scholarships. And we look forward to another application coming at the end of the summer to get ready for the fall tuition. Uh, Dean and I and every member of the scholarship team have supported this effort because we believe in the power of education to not only help members grow professionally and earn more money, but so that they can use their new skills and expertise in uh, serving uh, the Cedarfield community. You know, the scholarship fund here at Cedarfield grows weekly and uh, many generous people have continued to make gifts. Uh, even after these 19 scholarships, we'll have more than $100,000 in our fund for future generosity. And I think this fund will grow over the years. Uh, if any of you are interested in learning more about the Skeeter, uh, Cedarfield Scholarship Fund, uh, please reach out to Allison, and uh, she'd be happy to meet you. And I think that uh, if you want to do it on a confidential basis, I'm sure uh, uh, Paul would be glad to meet with you too. But uh, Thank you for your generosity and many thanks and congratulations to our scholars. We're going to move on to our next speaker and I don't know whether our folks here want to get back to work, but before Mariah goes, I want to thank her. Uh, Mariah put in all the back minutes of uh, Cedarfield into the um, My Cedarfield app. So they're currently 100% up to speed, and they'll go in immediately after the meeting minutes are turned into her uh, next week. Yes. So thanks, Mariah. Thank you. 
Um, we have someone to talk, uh, Joan Tipton, is she here? Yes. She's going to talk to us briefly about dementia friends training. I participated in the Dementia Friends training in 2019 and found it to be very helpful. I had family members and I have friends and acquaintances with dementia. This class helped me to connect, understand, and communicate with them. I really wish I had taken the class sooner. You're invited to join us for a one-hour training on May the 10th at 11 o'clock in the Chatterbox. Look in the May Informer to sign up, and if any area wants to host a Dementia Friends workshop, we can set that up for you. Thank you. Uh, we have another guest speaker, Beth Long, is going to tell us a little bit about the cedar chest and how it's come out of the dark and back into the light again. The cedar chest has emerged from going dark during the pandemic, reinvented, renewed, and revitalized. Fueling this effort are 15 plus enthusiastic and energetic regular volunteers, eager customers among both residents and team members, coupled with the inspiring and tireless guidance from Allison Zach. Although the sales prices are ridiculously low, so far this year, $2,586 plus has been raised through the reselling of apparel and housewares donated primarily from our residents. The proceeds are headed to the Samaritan Fund, which helps support our Cedarfield residents who may outlive their financial resources. Cedar Chest Sales Day are on the first and third Thursdays of each month from 10.30 to 1.30 in our shop, which is located on the second floor of Independent Living near the juncture with B-Wing. Alternate Thursdays are reserved for receiving merchandise and inventory has us literally bursting at our seams. Ask anyone who participated in the recent beachwear sale in the atrium. It was a fun and happening event for buying and mingling. A special mini sale for the Hermitage residents is on our schedule and there will be more excitement to come after the cedar chest closes the next few weeks to clean, restock, and reposition. So, April 7th, that will be our grand reopening. We hope to see many of you then, and please bring plenty of cash and checks with you. And while you browse, be sure to thank our terrific volunteers who are making this possible. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker um, is a little unusual uh, how I did this. Uh, VACRA is an important organization at Cedarfield, but it is not a resident council uh, committee. It's not a residence council committee. Uh, so I've asked, even though I didn't get it on the list, Vivian got it on the list right, back we're speaking now. So uh, if um, Mrs. Bailey would please come forward and give her a report.
Hello. We are pleased to announce that our membership has grown to over 108 persons and it continues to climb. Our March meeting was held on Friday the 18th with Dr. Marion Johnson speaking on Medicare and the Medicare certified beds we hope to have in the near future. The response was tremendous. We had 65 people to sign in at the door. And I think there were more than that because I think some people forgot to sign in. We had questions and comments from the floor and many stayed overtime to continue their discussions. As promised, we will be bringing monthly meetings to address the many tr topics that you are interested in. As you think of what concerns you and what interests you, please let us know so we can plan a program. All programs are open to all Cedarfield residents. Just a quick side comment though, I have been told that during our meeting last Friday, the handheld mics did not somehow connect with whatever the system is. Hmm? I don't know that, but that's good to know. You didn't know that? No. Did you, did you, were you aware of that, Paul? Has anybody spoken to you about that? I did. Both. Yeah, yeah. Both. Yeah, okay, now you know. Can we correct the prog problem? I, I, thought, where's Eddie? I thought Eddie said it had been corrected. Well, it wasn't correct last Friday. I don't know whether we've had a live, live stream program since then or not. But anyway, it was a real problem. Several people mentioned that to me. They wanted to hear it, and they couldn't. Okay, great, maybe we can get that taken care of. The VACRA Spring Newsletter has been distributed to the membership, and there are some interesting and newsworthy articles in this particular edition. I suggest that you share the newsletter with any friend or neighbor who would like to review it. The legislative report and the report on direct contracting are of particular interest. Again, I remind anyone who has not yet had the opportunity to fill in an application and write a check to a VACRA, we have all that information available to you here and now, right after this meeting. And Sally and Barbara and I would be delighted to talk with you and answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I guess we can get on with the meeting. We need to approve the minutes. Um, the minutes have been out. Um, does anybody have any corrections or additions to the minutes? Larry. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you a microphone. That's not working. Go ahead. Uh, the minutes uh, definitely have to be formatted to uh, uh, fit the uh, uh, report itself. But what I would like to know is, is the editing of reports without the authority or actually knowledge of the person uh, making the report. I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, minutes have been uh, edited, uh, and uh, I know on mine, uh, and I have not received any questions relative to the uh, change in the report. I would like the minutes that I give at least to be in the council minutes and as stated, not as edited. Okay, did you turn them in? Yes. Okay, then going forward, they'll be in. Any other corrections or additions? Can we have a, uh, we move the minutes be approved 
as amended by Larry? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, they're approved. I've got a few comments I want to start out with before we do committee reports and uh, uh, just some, just some um, things to get us up to speed on. I want to make sure that all the area representatives and committee members have a copy of the resident council handbook and that it's been updated with uh, the current officers' addresses, et cetera. Committee chairs, not members. Committee chairs, right. I say, I keep, she's correcting me three times on that and I still don't get it right. <laughs> committee chairs and area representatives. Everybody got one? If they don't, come see us and we can take care of it. Uh, second, we don't have to sign in and you don't have to call Vivian to let her know that you're coming to the meeting. We will sign in here at the desk for who's here among the uh, committee chairs and the area representatives. But if we have visitors, they do not, they do not have to sign in and they can come to the meeting at, at will. Um, second thing, parking. Um, we've got a, a problem parking in the parking out front. Um, people, visitors are coming, they can't park, and they're having to go down the hill, and some of the people are, 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 are not able to walk back up to, the, to dining, so they're just leaving and telling the people that they had come, uh, had come to see them that they couldn't stay because there was no place to park. Um, really, before we put up signs and have to change things out front, I would ask that people not permanently park in front. Not permanently park in front. Don't leave your car there overnight. Uh, D-Wing has its own parking. Every other place has parking along the side. We need to keep that that area up front open for visitors, emergencies, and other things. People coming from the cottage to come eat, uh, they have, sometimes have to park their car down the hill again to come up here. They might as well walk from the cottage as to drive up, quite frankly. So that's the second thing. Um, the next, uh, I'm gonna follow up some, some things from the last meeting. Uh, there were questions about carpet. Uh, the carpet is coming. That's all I can tell you. It's coming. Right, Paul? That's true. The library chairs, part of them are here and the rest are coming at some point. It's coming. Um, are we still having phone problems, uh, dropped calls? I know that Paul has sent a survey out to find out about that. So we'll wait until we get the answer on that to find out what the significance is of dropped calls. Uh, Last time they asked about the clubhouse availability. We have CNA training down there and it's off and on. I think it's going to be on a schedule so we'll understand what's available coming, going forward. Um, somebody asked a question about the funds from the residence council. Where do they go? Uh, to my knowledge, there's $500 given from administration. 150 has gone to pay back for dues. Uh, and the rest of it is split between the library and the flower committee, library fund and fire committee. That's not a lot of money uh, to give to those committees, but that is where I understand it has been. We're still doing names at the gate because we have some requirement here if somebody's visiting and they're going into the health care center, they need to know who is going in there, even if it's a resident. So we're going to continue to get, it's not going to go back to the old days where they saw your tag and shot you through and said, hey, now they obviously they know most of us, so some of them, some of us they do shoot us on through. But they're going to still ask the questions, and they have to keep a record. So I just uh, make you aware that that's not changing. Uh, the other thing, I make it clear that the minutes are now in Touch uh, Touchtown in my Cedarfield app under the Residence Council. All you do is go touch Residence Council. You can go in and see any minutes that have been in the past, and future minutes will be put in immediately. So if people talk about they don't have the minutes or how to get the minutes out. Quite frankly, if they have a computer, they have it now, and we can save some money by not having people passing out hard copies uh, routinely. So the area reps, in my opinion, it should be a, a benefit to them to just to say if somebody doesn't have a computer, computer or can't do it, maybe 
that person gets the uh, minutes in a hard copy. But I would suggest that the area reps find out who that is in their area. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything so far? We'll go, yes, Sylvia. Yes, ma'am. Question. Is security or anyone checking to see if there are parking tags on those cars? Um, I'm not sure, quite honestly. Because that would, if you had that information, you could find out if they are residents' cars. Well, we could also find out what residents were parking up there permanently, too. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. Thank you. Any other questions so far? Uh, and feel free to open up for questions if you don't understand uh, somebody's committee report or whatever we've got um, going forward with this. I hope we can keep the communication as, as good as we can. I'm going to try anyway. Um, first committee report is communication. about a new ad hoc program that is starting up on uh, about recycling and they plan a pretty extensive information campaign aimed at the residents and coming up will be a talk by a representative from a recycle company here in Fellowship Hall and a tour that we can take of their of a recycling facility. So that's going to be happening. Um, another member was concerned that the emergency checklist is not getting much attention from us. The uh, that emergency checklist is in your resident handbook. That resident handbook is going to, a new one is going to appear very soon. So we're not going to give you the page numbers, but it's in the section that's titled stay safe and secure. It's right at the end of your handbook. But the pages will change with this new edition. Uh, we looked at some uh, ongoing things, uh, signage. There is really nothing to report. The uh, pictorial directory is on track and should be received by all the residents by the mid-April. That's the goal. Um, we reviewed the telephone directory, that's still fairly new, and uh, Florence, who oversaw that, uh, Mariah does the actual work on that, the actual inputting, and Florence pointed out that the addition in this last edition of that directory had the addition of wings for people and for residents in the big house to make it easier for people who aren't familiar with the big house to find us. And they also um, group together spouses. And a third thing, um, well, there's a third thing somewhere. Um, but those things were in response, in direct response, to residents asking for them. So, you know, ask for what you need and things do change. So I hope those changes will be additions on this edition. Thank you. Uh, next report is Diner. Do we have a report? Yes, we do. The uh, dining committee met on March 16th. Uh, and as you know from the last few meetings, the emphasis has been 
on reducing the number of takeouts. So I would please encourage all residents to come and dine up here. Uh, this would free up the kitchen capacity in order to open up Prima as it was originally configured and have guests come for dinner. Uh, the, it has been trending in the right direction. So the average is about 145 down to an average of 110 uh, takeouts. Uh, just for reference, pre-COVID it was about 40 to 50. So we have a way to go. Um, average of 125 meals have, are being served in, <coughs> in, uh, at dinner. And the atrium varies a lot. It goes from 40 to 80 average uh, on any given day. Uh, the return of the salad bar has been a success. And dining is now working on phasing out the same-day reservation system so that you can walk up. But that again is going to depend on phasing out the, the uh, takeouts. Um, Claire uh, Culbertson, whom some of you might know, is piloting an online reservation system which is being used at Windsor Mead and it's uh, called the uh, table agent and uh, a few of us are trying it out. I've tried it out and it works very well. She's still debugging it and it'll go online soon so you can make a reservation from anywhere, anytime. Uh, communications from uh, the dining services will be through um, the channels 974 and also uh, boards at the dining areas, which will tell you what's happening. Flyers will be sent in serious situations or something really substantial. So in summary, uh, things are going well. Things are going in the right direction and we hope it will continue in terms of opening up the dining areas. I think if anybody has an interest in that uh, table agent thing, it's pretty cool. I, I've tried it. You can make the reservation online. If you see Claire, she might take, she might let you in to uh, be a, a guinea pig too if you wanted to. Uh, they, they are having a limited number, but I'm pretty sure she would. Uh, environmental is no report today. Facilities is no report. Finance is no report. Uh, we have a flower report, but you don't want a report? Okay. But what I can say, she submitted stuff, and um, uh, Louisa Rucker is, a, is amazing to me. I'm just going to tell you, what she does with flowers here at this place is unbelievable. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> uh, gardening, I guess, is there, is, is there a report? No, no report? Uh, health services, no report. Library. Hi, I'm Sally Wood, and we had a meeting March 18th. We have a new meet member, Jane Hudson, who already has given us hours of time in the library. We added $235 to our library um, fun, and that was because the members um, collected money in honor of Dolly Hintz. And you know, she retired from her position of three years recently and talked me into taking that role. She did not totally disclaim all the things that she was doing. Um, but I've had so much help, I can't tell you. We have nearly 30 members. But one member stood out this month, and we gave her the coveted Energizer Bunny Award, which I got to keep all of two days. Um, that person is Jenny 
Hendren. She lives now in the fourth new building. She is a professional librarian and she is in love with work and library work. So why did we give this award to her? Install programs to produce a laser printed label, created all the labels for the large print books. And let me tell you, you wonder why we want to continue doing that throughout the library. Come look at the large print books. It makes it look really as if we're a real library. <laughs> And it makes the books look more expensive for some reason. Um, she, uh, Jenny continues to um, do, will continue to do all the library printing, and that's about a thousand odd books. That is an aspirational goal for us this year. I don't think it'll take a year the way people are jumping in volunteering to do their section. Um, but Jenny continues to do that, and she has reviewed and updated our records and our software. Um, I have no idea what that means. Um, if she will continue to do so. She has written uh, new computer instructions and helped to reorganize the biography section. And I think we're talking six weeks later. So Energized Bunny Award certainly goes to her. But we have you know, some 30 people and in a short month's time, hundreds of hours are spent in that library, possibly doing new functions or that aren't, haven't been done before, but basically every month. And I don't think I realized until I got involved with the library just how many jobs there were to do. Now I, for some foolish reason, listed every one of the jobs. I will do you a favor and not read my list. but. Um, I, I do not want to de-emphasize the importance of this committee and about 100,000 hours have been spent by all of them trying to teach me about what I'm doing and that's particularly true of Dolly because she spent a lot of time educating me and, and we are very accept, excited about the new furniture coming in. We, um, we, we will wait with bated breath to see what was ordered. Um, I do want to thank another new member, Ben Jones. I, know, I don't know if you know him. He's in the lane, maybe. I think he's in the lane. And he uh, worked through Mike and had him call and write me with hundreds of books, that, well, not hundreds, but a lot of books that we could take. We ended up taking more than 40 books from him. And if every processing of that went so smoothly, he actually had a list of publication dates, that whether or not he thought the book was in pristine condition or not. And so we were able to look through his list and very easily determine which ones we needed based on age, the condition of the book, and also whether we had duplicates. And that led me to suggest that we did reanalyze our policy on accepting books and getting that policy published and streamlined even more than it had been. So that's it. Thank you. Um, religious life, no report. Safety, no report. Uh, Nellie, are you going to report or you just want me to make that little announcement? Uh, we have a recently been welcomed uh, John and Kathy Barber to apartment 218. Okay, very good. Wellness and leisure, Barbara. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we had our first meeting of this new council year on uh, March 18th. Um, it was a great time to be back. Thank Jim Trominer for all his work last year. Uh, the, um, I don't know if you know how we operate, but we almost always start with uh, the staff member um, from War Wellness and Leisure, their leisure and wellness, I think. Um, and this month it was Katrin Salters. And the primary thing was uh, to talk about the April calendar 
and the pathways, whoops, the pathways to wellness um, showcase. The showcase is going to be April 26, a good date to put on your calendar. Uh, they will display uh, the programs offered all over the campus. So you'll get the fitness, the pool, um, those are primary in my mind. Um, there'll be some booths in Fellowship Hall here. Registration will be here in Fellowship Hall also. Um, the Wellness and Leisure Committee will have a booth coordinated with the Social Connections Pathways Dimension. And we'll be working with um, Louisa Rucker and um, uh, the Administrative Assistant to Paul, uh, Eleanor Moore, okay, on that. Um, and our emphasis from the committee will be resident-run programs, um, there'll be a brochure describing the activities and an updated leadership um, contact sheet and maybe a map of where some of the things are like ping pong, billiards, that's a discussion point still. Also, I think it's important to know the um, staff are now doing six month planning. So for April, they'll be doing the May through January planning. So if you have ideas, you need to get them to committee members or to the staff um, now for the next six months. So that's something that they just started uh, maybe at the end of last year or maybe not till this year. Uh, but I think it's a wonderful idea. The, I'll just highlight a few things for um, the calendar programming. April is volunteer month. And so they're going to have two trips, um, one to Feed More, one to Ronald McDonald. And then there'll be a continental breakfast honoring our volunteers here. And then Earth Day is April 22nd, and they're going to have trips to the already mentioned recycling plant, as well as a lecture in April. Um, we also talked about volunteerism a little bit. A list of volunteer opportunities was handed out and a suggestion was made to have that list and the contacts of how you get on to a particular volunteer activity, contact names and information in the informer. Um, now, Mike already said that the minutes are, it was brought up that the minutes weren't on Touchtown. Mike already answered that. It was done, I think, the very next day by Mariah. Uh, uh, now, on, we, we always look at, we talk about resident run clubs, the movies, which are continuing three times a month. Um, and we talk about fitness. We talk about uh, creative arts and they're regularly on our agenda, and then programs in general. Now, I want to delve a little deeper into fitness, because first of all, Carol Thompson came and she introduced the new full-time fitness person, Alice Carpenter. So if you haven't met her, please do. She's wonderful, personable, and a great addition here. We also talked a lot about um, bringing on a stronger culture of fitness here. We have wonderful uh, classes. We now have two full-time partner uh, members so we can offer more. And we are going to be looking into how to really increase the culture here so that everybody is excited about coming to the classes and their rooms are maybe overfilled. Um, and to do that, how? We discussed uh, updated schedule of times, um, maybe differing times, uh, planning and implementation of meetings with area reps, and maybe encouraging them to start a buddy system. Uh, there was talk of a new walking club, which would be resident run. So 
a group will be meeting to do more of that and watch for the showcase because I think a lot of it will be coming out there. But also area reps all, well there used to be 18, I think they're 21 now. Um, we will be in touch probably not till the end of April trying to meet and set up a schedule because we got to get this moving. And I was supposed to take off my scarf and show you, whoops, you can dress for fitness. Now I'm going to PT, but you can do it. And I actually have another labor, but you don't want, we won't go there. So that's the important thing because we have this culture of dining that is absolutely marvelous here. We need to have the same enthusiasm Invite someone not for wine, but for fitness. And with that, I will close. Thank you so much. Barbara Carroll talked to me. She wants to be on the next residence council uh, meeting, so uh, I'm sure she's got some ideas. I told her what we need to do is we need to have the 21 areas have a challenge. Which which area can get the most fitness out of their people in a certain period of time. It doesn't have to be walking, it could be wee ping pong, it could be anything that you do, but to try to get everybody in your area. So I'm, I'm going to talk to her about seeing if we can't get the area representatives to get behind this and try to have a, a little challenge. Anybody got any questions about the committee reports so far? Uh, area reports, that I only have two that have turned them in in advance, so area five, Grace Ann Miller, is she here? Yes. Or well, any representative yes. from that group? <laughs> uh, just real quick, uh, I think I can do that. Yeah. Oh, no. yes. Come on. Okay. You can do it, Sam. <laughs> just real quick, area five had a delightful St. Patrick's Day dinner last week up in the Prima Club room, and we wanted to let you know that that is so easy to set up if you want to do that with your areas. Um, check with Steve and let him know how many people um, we used the showcase so they didn't do individual menus but they put salads on the table with bread and then we went to the showcase and of course they had a wonderful St. Patrick's dinner that night and 21 of us were, were able to be together so that's a that's an option you might want to think about for your areas it required very little work on our part to to prepare for it so um, it's something to think about uh, area 9, Larry Miller, Larry, Larry Meyer. Uh, yes. uh, area 9 welcomes uh, Rosie Whitehorn. Uh, Rosie has moved on up from the first floor to the C Wing uh, on the uh, second floor. And for uh, management's attention, there is a pallet in the courtyard here that has been here for uh, at least a week or more and is basically killing grass and someone should take a look at the pergola out in front both the east side and west side it is in need of paint repair thank you are there any other area reports you can you can come and you don't have to put them in in advance it just helps and if we have a uh, reports in the future, uh, Vivian, if you can send them to her email, it's really the easiest way for her to do it. This is a, the secretary's job is a, is a big job here, i got to be honest with you, and it's a lot of work. So uh, the way we can make it easier for her, it's the, the better, right? And her email address is vpmak2 at icloud.com. Have I got it? Yeah, iCloud.com. Um, do we have any old business? Anybody? Anybody have new business? Hearing none, I would say we're adjourned until April 27th at 2 p.m. Thank you all for coming. Paul, do you want to have a statement? No, I'll keep my powder dry. Say again? I'll keep my powder dry. He was offered. He, he said he wasn't going to speak today, Barbara. 
All right. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.